Let's talk about 10. What is 10? Toxic epidermal necrolysis. So what is it? It's a systemic illness, actually. Although it involves mainly skin, but the severe inflammation leads to toxic systemic features. That's why you have the word T in front. So toxic. Epidermal necrolysis means there is involvement of epidermis and the epidermis actually sloughs off. That is toxic epidermal necrolysis. It's a severe disease. It's a medical emergency. It's a medical emergency. And obviously it needs to be managed in a specialized ward, such as in a darm ward or in a barn unit, or maybe in an ICU setting, depending on the patient situation. So I will talk about uh, the causes of TAN, the clinical features, the typical investigations, and the typical management plan. So what causes TAN? Typically, the TAN is usually due to a drug. And that drug belongs to a few groups, maybe anticonvulsant, maybe antibiotic, maybe other drugs such as sulfonylurea drugs or NSAIDs. Those are the drugs typically associated with uh, toxic epidermal necrolysis. What are the anti anticonvulsants? Anticonvulsants such as carbamazepine, phenytoin, etc. Antibiotics such as sulfonamides, sulfonylureas, which are antidiabetic agents. Alongside those, um, allopurinol might also lead to a toxic epidermal necrolysis. Next, let's go to the clinical features. As the name suggests, there will be epidermal necrolysis. Initially, there will be erythema. The skin will be inflamed and there will be erythema. And following that, the erythematous skin will become a blister. And multiple blister will merge together. They will merge or they will coalesce and they will form large blister. And those large blisters will ultimately necros and denude the skin and the skin is inflamed and skin is painful so denude skin which is very painful the classic feature of tan alongside those features the patient will also have systemic illness such as fever and severe weakness and there will be involvement of the mucous membranes so there will be um, blisters and erosions and ulcers in the mucous membranes so uh, let's go to the investigations. The basic idea is to exclude the differential and one of the differential is immunobolus disease, immunobolus disease. And to do that, we have to take a skin biopsy. And this may be a skin snip, skin snip. In the skin snip, we will also do the immunofluorescence to evaluate for any immunobolus disease. And usually uh, we have to do the other general investigation to assess the condition of the patient, such as you have to do the complete blood count with the ESR, you have to do the RBS, you have to do a liver function test, a renal function test, etc. So those are needed for your management purpose. And you might have to do a blood culture, you have, have to do a CRP level, an ESL level, those will help in monitoring the treatment and CS will help in identifying an infection. And um, management actually is very simple. Management is mostly symptomatic. The management is mostly symptomatic. The first step of management is stopping the drug. So you have to identify the drug, ID the drug, and then stop the drug that is causing this stent. That's the first step. Next step, obviously, we have to admit the patient into a specialized care setting, maybe in a dorm setting, maybe in a barn setting, or better to be in an ICU setting. And what are the things that you give? The things that you give include, you have to give the patient fluid, a lot of fluid. So fluid management is paramount. And keep the skin very clean. So you have to provide sterile dressing to keep the skin uh, very clean and avo avoid infections. And the patient may have discomfort. And for that, 
you might have to do give emollients. Obviously, you monitor for infection, and if there is any signs of infection, you have to add antibiotics. So those are the main pillars of management. You have to give sterile dressing, you have to give emollients, you have to maintain a fluid balance and give antibiotics whenever you suspect infection. Additionally, treat any complications that arise, such as uh, there can be renal failure, there can be liver failure and other organ failure. So uh, treat the multi-organ failure, support the organs and avoid usually avoid steroids, avoid IVIG. They don't have any role in management. Uh, among the complications, I forgot to mention one thing, treat the eye, take care of eye and urethra because oftentimes the patients develop ocular problem and urethral stricture after prolonged stay at the hospital. So take care of the eye and take care of the urethra. That's all.